This is part two of connecting a microcontroller to a computer using UART communication. In the previous video, we connected a crystal oscillator that measures 18.432 megahertz. We described crystal oscillators briefly. We connected it to our microcontroller and we set the fuses on the microcontroller to accept an external oscillator with this megahertz range and we tested the output of this on an LED or using an LED to determine whether we were actually running at the speed of this external oscillator. In this video I'm going to show how to establish the actual physical connection using an FTDI or FT232 board like this and it connects to the computer via USB and there are six pads that will connect back to the microcontroller. We're not going to use all of the pads. We're only going to be using the, uh, the ground, VCC, and TX and RX pads. Normally, I wouldn't start with an item like this because it's already constructed. Um, but you can't find these chips, the FTDI chips, uh, unless they're uh, surface mount. And surface mount doesn't work on a breadboard. But you could construct a circuit like this. But the problem with a circuit like this, it's really involved. You can see there's quite a few things going on here. And it's a bit fragile with a connector like this just floating on a board um, inside of some tie strips. So my suggestion is to just use one of these. And then once you're ready to create a project or an actual product, go ahead and just go to the FTDI website and get some of the data sheets. Look at the, the actual schematic of this board or the application notes for this chip, the FTDI 232 chip, and just apply that in your, in your overall schematic when you're ready to, to make a product that has or that requires a USB to serial connection within it. So your product can actually just receive a USB cable, a standard USB cable, and it will just work with this chip within the circuit. To be able to plug the, the FT232 into the, into the breadboard, I soldered some stranded cable or stranded wire to the pads on the actual board, and then I just soldered some tips onto the ends. I used the same coloring convention as the FTDI cable on the top of the board where the USB sits on the top. The first pad is RX, which is the yellow wire. The next pad in the middle is TX, which is a an orange wire. And the bottom pad right here is VCC 5 volts. And on the reverse, the middle, the middle pin is, or middle pad, is the ground. Okay, let's start writing a program to communicate with the computer. Make a new project, UART with computer. I'll be using the 644. The first thing that we need to do is inform the compiler that we're going to be using a different clock source or clock frequency. We'll use our UART methods. And since we're going to be using the interrupts with the receiving, we'll need the interrupts header file. Now I mentioned we'd be using the interrupts for receiving and not transmitting. Transmitting, we're still going to be doing, uh, we're going to be transmitting through polling uh, because there's really no interrupt or no reason why we would need to um, to be informed when we want to transmit. I mean, we want to transmit when we want to transmit. So uh, we're going to be using the interrupt only when we're receiving something because we need to be alerted or to be interrupted uh, when we have something in the queue uh, that we've just received. We'll talk about that a little bit more. And we're going to use the LED that we put on the, the circuit to tell us if we are receiving a character or receiving something from the RX line and from the computer. Since that's really our only output device we have on our circuit at the moment. And it's a good way to determine whether we are actually receiving something. For transmitting, all we have to do is look at uh, what we want to transmit and then um, watch that on our computer screen to see if it's being transmitted. Let's start by creating our data direction for the LED and that's going to be on pin B1 or pin B0 actually. And let's also establish our interrupt flag. If this stuff seems foreign to you, just go back to my previous videos on interrupts. And we also need to initialize our UART. So let's go ahead and do that here as well. 
We're using the UART0, um, RXD0 and TXD0, so our UART0 on, on the 644. And as you remember from the previous videos, we have a function that establishes this in initialization. And the first parameter is the baud rate. We'll use 9600 baud for now. And we're not going to be using double speed. Our data size in bits, that will be 8. That's our frame or data bits in, um, in, within our data frame. Uh, parity odd or even or none. I'm going to go ahead and just select none. And the stop bits will be 1. And this one you may not actually know. It is the usart interrupt enable. And I'm going to go ahead and say true. And I will explain this now. If you want to go to a function um, implementation or where we've defined the function, where we've created all the code for it, we can just press the right button on initialize uart0 or the function name and just go to implementation. It'll open up the uart methods header file. And <clears throat> I've added a another parameter to the end of the parameter list um, to import into the, the function. And it's called usart interrupt enable. And we didn't use interrupts until now. So I needed to add this to the to the list of parameters. And it accepts a true or false, whether I'm going to use the interrupt enable or whether I'm not going to be using the interrupt enable. If you find that you need to use the interrupts, um, uh, using the interrupt for for alerting you when there's a when there's a byte in the uh, reading buffer, then you can do that with the interrupt enable bit within the control register for the UART. This is the receive interrupt enable under the control control register for the USART. And I put in an if condition here, so this actually needs to be put back in. And it says if the UART if this is true, then it will enable the interrupt. And that is all I added to this to this function. So you can also do that to the the number one UART. It's just added here and it also has it at this location. I need, actually need to change this to a one because this is actually the number one UART. Okay, so this is established. Now we can use the true, go back to our program, and now we have the interrupts enabled for the, the UART and the initialization, and we can use the interrupt. So let's go ahead and write the interrupt function. It's the usart0 rx vector. Okay, and within this, um, the data will reside in the UBR0 location. And I'm going to create a, a variable to hold this information and the life of this variable will be global because I want to, I may want to, might want to use it within my while statement. I'm not going to be using it now, but um, just in case, I'll you know I'll, I'll establish that that variable that I can use anywhere in my program, and it has to be volatile because you don't want the compiler to be optimizing this this variable out when it um, compiles it, and it's unsigned because. It's going to be of a um, of a standard ASCII character set, so I don't want it to be in the negative region. It has to be a positive. I'll call it received byte, and then I can use this to to remove the contents from the UDR zero location and put it into the received byte variable. I'm not going to be using the received byte. I'm just trying to take it out of this uh, this buffer for the moment. I'm not going to do anything with the received byte. I'm only going to notify that I have gotten into this location that I've actually this is actually working. And um, when I receive something from the computer, it will take me to this function, this interrupt service routine, and I'll know that it it worked. And I'm going to do that with the the LED. And I'm going to toggle the LED every time we receive something. So when we type in something to the computer over the serial line, the LED should turn off and turn on. So the uh, so we'll know that it's at least working and it's gotten into this interrupt service routine. Now let's test to make sure that the, the transmitting portion of the program is working. So we're going to just use the transmit UART0 and we're just going to put in the letter A. Uh, but if we do this, then it's just going to fill up our screen with just a bunch of letter A's. We don't want to do that. So I'm going to delay this. So every half second, we can receive the letter A on our terminal screen on the computer. So this program should be done. Well, not really. I forgot to put the delay in there. Let's do that. Include util delay. Okay. Okay, let's try to build it and see if it builds. 
Okay, it built. Now we can plug in our circuit for programming and program the market color and program it. Oh, we have it on debug. Change that to release. We have to rebuild it under the release. Now we can program it. Now we need to figure out a way to be able to communicate to the market controller from the computer. Before Windows 7, there used to be a way to do this with a program called Hyper Terminal, but they don't supply Hyper Terminal to Windows 7 anymore. So you have to use programs like Hyper Serial Port or Putty. Just go to Google and you can download either one of these. Hyper Serial Port is at hyperserialport.com and you can just download it here. This is a strictly only serial communication application. It won't allow you to, to do any other types of communication. So if you want to do like telnet or, or internet communication, you will not be able to do it. You'll have to only do, you're only relegated to doing com port or serial communication. With PuTTY, just type in PuTTY and it should be the first one. It's the PuTTY download page and there is a Windows installer here that is a pretty easy installer, pretty um, standard installation. And this one has a little bit more flexibility. It'll allow you to do serial communication, but a lot more. But that also means the setup could be a lot more confusing as well. So you have to, um, let me give you an example. You start up PuTTY, you have the session, which you select the specific type of communication and you would want to put serial here. It shows you the COM port and the speed, and then you just go to the bottom here and do the actual setup for it. If you, for instance, used COM port 5, change this to um, 4800, you go back up to ses session and it will reflect those values. So you can use PuTTY or, or a hyper serial port, uh, they'll both work. Uh, once you've done that, you can just press the open. Unable to open, so the MyCom5 isn't actually working right now because I don't have the FTDI um, serial port plugged in. The hyper serial port is, uh, you just go to the properties, you would um, refresh, select your COM port, change the parameters, uh, press OK. Oh, I can't do it now because of that. I don't have a COM port. Connect and just press connect. Obviously COM1 doesn't exist. And this is the area of the screen that you'd be using to type or communicate. For these tests, I'll be using the hyper serial port. Let's go ahead and plug in the FTDI USB to serial interface into the microcontroller breadboard correctly and plug it into the computer and get this working. We can remove the programmer because we won't be needing that. And we're going to be um, putting a another voltage source to the microcontroller. So we don't want that voltage source to be to be streaming through this programmer. So. Let's go ahead and take the red wire, which is the um, the pad over here. It's the VCC. And we'll plug it into the, the plus. We'll take the black or the pad underneath, the middle pad underneath, ground, and take that to the minus. And the, the RX, which is the yellow, it's on this pad here, the, the leftmost pad. That's going to go, this, the receiving is going to go to the market controller's transmit because when the market controller transmits, we want the computer to be receiving. That's very important. And that is on pin number 14. And we'll take the transmit, actually, no, the receiving is on the 15 because the 15 is the transmit and the transmit goes to the receiving pin of the market controller, which is the 14 pin. So just to review, the pin that is receiving, the computer is receiving, is going to go to the transmit pin on the market controller, which is pin number 15. And the receiving pin, or the transmit pin on the computer, as it's transmitting out, will go to the receiving pin on the market controller. So the receiving, the market controller can, can hear or listen to what is being put on the, on the transmit pad of the interface. And then we can, we can plug it in. When you first plug in the FTDI interface, you'll get a message that Windows is recognizing the, the serial converter, and then it's actually going to get a serial port, and it'll tell you the port, which is COM5. You want to uh, look at this while it's, while it's um, doing the driver software installation, so you can get the COM port number. Now that the interface is plugged in, the FTDI interface, the USB to serial interface, is plugged in, 
we can configure it. I've already configured mine. I'm going to refresh it again to show you that it comes in as COM6. I'm using a, um, a different uh, interface. That's why I get COM6 and not COM5. Uh, but you can change the configuration as with the same values that you have in the microcontroller. 9600 baud, 9600 baud, 8 data bits, no parity, 1 stop bit, and this you can just put to none. It doesn't really matter at this point because we're not using those. You press OK and connect and you'll notice that the microcontroller is outputting the A every half second as we programmed it. Now if we put a cursor here and we started to to type in characters you won't see anything typing in because we are not echoing our keystrokes back to the display but as I'm typing, the LED is toggling on and off. Okay, I'm pressing some buttons. You can see that it is, the LED is toggling every time I click on a keyboard button. That's how to communicate with the computer from the AVR or between the AVR and the, and the computer. With the information you've learned so far, you should be able to expand this capability greatly by having the LED do all kinds of different things. Like, for instance, if you clicked on the number five, then the LED would blink five times. Or you can also um, control the, the microcontroller in uh, many ways using the computer to, to create a menu. For instance, like if you press the number five, then the computer would, or the microcontroller would spit back uh, a menu option, like one through five. It would show all of that information through the COM port onto the screen of the, the hyper serial port, and it would give you the options that you can use, maybe one through five are the options, and you can press the one, uh, and then the microcontroller will receive the one, and then it will perform the actions that that particular menu choice has. This is a uh, is one of the ways that is used to control microcontrollers through the COM port. And I encourage you to look at different ways to use the serial port. If you are a programmer that writes programs on the computer side, such as VB, Visual Basic, C Sharp, even C++ or C, you can consider using those that programming language and write programs rather than using the hyper, hyper terminal or hyper serial port. If you are following along with these experiments or producing successful projects on your own, helped by these tutorials, please let me know using the Contact Us page on the newbiehack.com website. I would like to feature these on the website to benefit and motivate others to join this creative field. Thank you.